story to tell. In the history of the development of the Soviet manned battle tank during the Cold War, a tank design was never exported even though it was rated better than the T-54, 55, 62 generation and even T-72. It was the T-64 manned battle tank, a revolutionary tank in the Soviet and Korean tank design. The technologies applied to T-64 are now popular all over the world, even on the latest generation of T-14 Amata tank. However, unlike the popularity of T-54, 55, 62 or 72, T-64 tanks were not sold abroad by the Soviet Union or add to any country in the world, although by the time it was born, the Korean was witnessing many conflicts, typically the war in Vietnam. Why didn't Soviet Union provide T-64 abroad? It can be said that the Soviet Union's second-generation manned battle tank was a revolution to the tank war at the time it debuted in 1960 to 1970. The T-64 development program started right in the mid-1950s with the Object 430 creating the outstanding T-54 tank, meeting the war against Western tanks at the time. After many improvements, research and experimentation, in 1966, the new T-64 tanks were accepted by the Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party and the Soviet Council of Ministers. It was publicly revealed in 1970. The production ended in 1987 for own versions. The total production has reached almost 13,000. The T-64 was the first Soviet tank to replace human loaders with mechanical autoloaders, reducing the crew from 4 to 3, including commander, gunner, and driver. The T-64 second trend setting innovation was the introduction of composite armor, which layered ceramics and steel together to provide superior resistance compared to early steel. Armor protection ranks up to 450 mm in thickness. In spite of being armed and armored like heavy tank, the T-64 weighed only 30 tons. Further, the T-64 had lightweight, small diameter on steel road wheels in contrast to a large rubber rim ones on the T-55 and T-62. These features made the T-64 expensive to build, significantly higher than previous generations of Soviet tanks. This was especially true of the power pack, which was time-consuming to build and cost twice as much as more conventional designs. Several proposals were made to improve the T-64 with new engines, but chief designer Alexander Morozov's political power in Moscow kept the design in production in spite of any concerns about price. This led to the T-72 being designed as an emergency design, only to be produced in the case of a war. But its 40% lower price led to it entering production in spite of Morozov's objections. Initial production version of the T-64 was armed with a fully stabilized 115mm gun. Essentially, it was the same gun as used on the previous T-62 medium tank. Initial production version of the T-64 was considered as a medium tank due to its caliber. The T-64 was the first Soviet tank to be fitted with an autoloader. At that time, only the Swedish STRV-103 has such feature. The autoloader allowed to reduce the crew, 
as slower or slow longer required. Reduction of the crew allowed to reduce the size of the turret. The T-64 fires high explosive, high explosive fragmentation, and APF SDS rounds. Maximum rate of fire was up to 10 rounds per minute. The T-64 was fitted with a single coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. Later versions were equipped with a 12.7mm NSVT series heavy machine gun to counter low flying area threats. Standard NBC protection was afforded to the crew as was a fire extinguishing system. The five large short wheels consistent with earlier Soviet tanks were dropped in favor of six more road wheels to a check side. The tri sprocket was now relocated to the rear of the hull with a check idler at the front. The hull was suspended by an effective and advanced torsion bar suspension system. The driver's position was now centered at the front hull as opposed to front left. Initial production version of the T-64 was powered by a 4TPD opposed diesel engine. On later models, it was replaced with updated 5DT and 5DTF engines, provided 700 horsepower. The maximum speed can be up to 60 km per hour. The operating range is 500 km and can be up to 700 km with external tanks. The T-64 tank is fitted with a deep weighting kit. It can float water obstacles up to 5 meters deep. A 1976 upgrade brought about another revision to the fire control system as well as improved night vision support and gun stabilization. In the early 1980s, another upgrade brought about former use of external smoke grenade discharges to replace the engine generating smoke system used on prior Soviet tanks. Other combat-oriented equipment was also upgraded in time. At the time of its introduction, the T-64 was a very advanced machine. On the other side, it was expensive to build and troublesome to maintain. A less capable but cheap and reliable T-72 tank was introduced a couple of years later. The T-72 was produced in thousands. It was the workhorse of the Soviet Army. Production numbers of the T-64 were smaller and it was rather a force multiplier. Initially, the T-64 had some fire control advantages, but that diminished with introduction of improved versions of the T-72. At present, the T-64 is in use in very few nations or regions, but is currently undergoing significant factory overhauls and modernization in Ukraine. The new East vastly upgraded an improved model of this 50 years old design. The T-64 BM Bulat has increased in weight to 45 tons and is seeing active service in the field. Equipped with the world's most advanced technologies, T-64 tanks have become a dream for every country in the world. Even NATO countries in the 1960s did not have any tanks as strong as T-64. However, having these advanced technologies was one of the main reasons that prevented the T-64 from rolling out to the outside world. The Soviet Union could not accept a modern tank like T-64 fell into the hands of the Western world. In addition, the high cost of production led to a monstrous expensive unit cost that made the T-64 tank not only not exported but also not widely equipped for the Soviet Red Army. It was almost exclusively equipped 
for the elite mechanized infantry unit to seize the vital area of the Soviet Union and Warsaw blocks, such as East Germany and Hungary. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, T-64 tanks were divided among republics. The two most occupied were the Russian Federation, up to 4,000 units, and Ukraine, 2,345 units. In 2014, the Democratic Republic of Congo became the first country outside of the Soviet Union to own a T-64 tank after a contract with Ukraine. Since it was never exported, T-64 had no chance to join the war. The only war it took was the conflict in eastern Ukraine. There, the T-64 became a formidable disappointment. Many T-64 tanks were destroyed, even losing the turret after being hit. It was really a big question mark with a tank that has a revolutionary composite armor. However, the sources later explained that the T-64 produced in Ukraine suffers from a serious technical defect in production process, making it completely incapable of countering attacks from enemy shells or anti-tank missiles. In other words, it is easier to understand that the T-64 tanks manufactured in Ukraine were of very poor quality, probably not true to the prototype. We can see that the T-64 main battle tank may not be the most successful Soviet tank, but it kept American intelligence officials guessing for years. My video of T-64 main battle tank ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye, and see you again in the next videos.